Thanks. Thanks, John. Uh, one of your priorities has been, as you said, to keep the war confined to Israel and Gaza. So are you concerned that that's going to be more difficult as casualties grow in Gaza and as the war escalates? It's going to, I mean, I think uh, the, the, the prospect of widening is, is going to depend a lot on, uh, on other actors outside Israel. And then just a quick follow-up. The U.S. is accelerating PGMs that Israel already paid for and then potentially considering sending even more after that. Have there been any restrictions put on how Israel uses those weapons? And if not, why not? I won't speak about that for Israeli operational security reasons, uh, and I'm not even going to get into detailing the kinds of munitions that, were being that are being provided to them. The Israelis have a, a right to have that information protected for their, for their own ability to conduct operations. Go ahead, Nadia. Thank you. Um, John, I'm here. No. I want to press you on a previous question. Good. This, this good. administration. I like that. Uh, good. This administration fought very hard against misinformation. You hold the truth as a gospel. So facts matter, I guess. Um, when you have misinformation, please to incitement and what to come. So again, whether it's the stories of beheaded babies or the rape, I just want to make sure that you are 100% sure of these stories because they prepare us for what to come. And I have in mind the Iraq war, where notable outlets, including many of our colleagues here, had disseminated misinformation and government lie, actually, about the, the, the war. There's no comparison here, but I'm There's saying. There's no comparison take, whatsoever. Yeah, I don't take uh, somebody else's uh, information as, if you don't verify it yourself. So are you saying there is no need to verify it yourself because you trust the sources? And I'm asking, my question to you is, how do you separate between facts and misinformation? Uh, that that boy, that's a. I mean, I taught a whole class at Georgetown on that. I mean, we could talk about this for hours. I mean, look. Obviously, we take seriously. What's that? <laughs> you're gonna have to register. You're gonna have to register for the class. I'll take the whole course with you. I don't know if you could handle the reading list, James. Look, we take it. We take it very, very seriously. Uh, the 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 need to be as factual uh, and certainly truthful as, as we can possibly be. Um, uh, I, if you're suggesting somehow that we're taking that lightly, I mean, I would again refer you to many of the reporting many of your colleagues have done about the atrocities that have already taken place, excuse me, in just the last few days. Um, and comments made by Israeli officials themselves. Um, it's, it's obvious, sadly, but it's obvious what Hamas has proven willing to do to innocent Israeli citizens. We're, we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to shy away from talking about the grotesque, grotesque nature here of what uh, these terrorists ha have done. But I also think it's important that we all, and I'm not, I don't mean this in a uh, chastising way, but we all have to keep the larger picture in mind here uh, of what's going on and, uh, and how important it is for Israel to be able to eliminate this very real very tangible, very demonstrable threat to the lives of their own citizens. One more question, just quickly. If you manage or succeed to open the border crossing with Egypt to Rafah, can you guarantee that Palestinians from Gaza who are exiting will go back? Because there is a fear Will go back. Yes, to go back to Gaza after the war ends. Because there's a fear that when people leave, as history told us, since you're referring to Georgetown, you, they, well, they, they don't come back. So uh, they don't come back. There's people okay. worried about an ethnic cleansing, that when people leave, they don't come back. I know, I understand that. Uh, our focus right now is making sure that, and not all of them are going to want to leave, but who, those who do, who really want to get out, that they have the ability to get out. That's the real first priority. Um, uh, and, and, you know, if, if there's a concern about getting back in at the appropriate time, we'll certainly deal with that as a policy issue going forward. I mean, the, the bottom line here is that we know that Gaza is home for these people. And, and they, if they want to go back home, they should absolutely be allowed to go back home. But they should be able to make those decisions, just like citizens anywhere should be able to make those kinds of, uh, of decisions. Yeah, 